you've been lied to. Science communicators, magazines, reputable publications that talk about science, even me. When we say time stops at the speed of light, we're not telling you the truth. Let's be a little less dramatic here. The other day I posted a video in which I am connecting causality and the speed of light. And I bridge that gap by describing that time stops at the speed of light. Some of the most famous scientists out there talk about time stopping when you reach the speed of light, but it's not accurate. So why talk about it like that? Unfortunately, it's an extremely useful, but fundamentally flawed description. Let's find out why. Now, of course, we got to start with a classic example. You see someone accelerating towards the speed of light while you stay here on earth. There's a person that has been shot out into space and they have a giant clock on them that they're approaching the speed of light. And as you watch their clock, you notice that the faster they go, the closer they get to the speed of light. Their clock ticks slower and slower and slower until they reach a point where they're going so fast that it's as though their clock has stopped ticking. This is time dilation. Now, something that's very, very important here, you cannot pass it up when you're talking about this stuff, is that time dilation requires another frame of reference because the person that is traveling at close to the speed of light experiences no change from their perspective. As they speed up, the rate at which their clock ticks stays the same. Nothing for them is different. And that is because they are still experiencing their proper time. Proper time is just basically saying that whatever speed you're going, a second will still seem like a second to you. But why does anyone see anyone's clock slow down? Let's look at this mathematically. This is the equation for time dilation. This V right here represents the speed that an object is going. This C represents the speed of light. As V gets larger and approaches the value of C, it makes the entire value here on the bottom get closer to zero. Now, if you've taken any calculus, you might be noticing this seems like a limit. And yes, the limit does exist. So for our traveler, the faster he goes, based on this calculation, the more pronounced the effects of time dilation will be. The slower time will pass as observed by us. Now again, he does not experience any change to his clock from his perspective. So what happens then if he were to somehow be able to make the jump to travel at the speed of light? The value for V becomes equal to C. Well, as you can see from looking at this, that would make this part here equal zero, which means we get a value of one over zero. And if you've taken any math, you've probably realized there is a massive problem with this. It's undefined. You can't describe time with this equation at the speed of light because you can't really calculate it. Okay, fine, all well and good, but let's talk about being hypothetical. Why can't we talk about the speed of light and the passage of time in a hypothetical sense? Well, okay, we can, but we have to accept that doing so means that we are stepping outside of relativity. Let's talk about why that is. There are a couple of kind of important postulates in relation to special relativity. We'll just take a look at them. This first one basically is just saying that the laws of physics are the same no matter what your reference frame is, no matter what you're doing, no matter where you are in the universe. The laws of physics are always gonna be the same. The second one, which is extremely important to our discussion here, says this. It says the speed of light in a vacuum will always be the same. Light will always travel at 300,000 kilometers or 186,000 miles per second, no matter how fast the observer's going, no matter how fast the object that emits the beam of light is going, light still travels at the same speed and it will always be observed in a vacuum to do so. So what does that mean? Okay, fine, it will always be observed. So why don't we just talk about it from the perspective of a photon? Let's again look at the postulate. The speed of light will always be constant in a vacuum, which now we're getting to why the description is, is useful but extremely flawed. The answer is not so deeply hidden in there. Speed of light will always be constant. Another way to put that is that light will always propagate at the same velocity. Another way to put that is that a photon cannot be at rest. We can try to talk about the experience or the perspective of a photon, but we're going to again have to step out of a concrete description of relativity because that second postulate indicates you can't describe the experience of a photon because experience would, whether you like it or not, imply that a photon is at rest and you can't have a photon at rest. It's essentially like trying to ask, what would light see if light saw light travel away from it at the speed of light? If that sentence broke your brain, that's because it's that, that it's a nonsensical thing to say, which is why you have these attempts to describe it that use terminologies like time stops at the speed of light because you can't really truly describe what's going on. 
it doesn't experience space it doesn't experience time it doesn't have a frame of reference in which you can describe these things because we are asking a question that can't be asked and answered without stepping outside of the realm of relativity hopefully by trying to describe to you how photons don't have a perspective they can't experience things and, and time is essentially undefined per the math you understand why saying time stops at the speed of light is useful but fundamentally flawed and is not what is happening anyway i hope this helps i understand if it doesn't it's kind of weird stuff either way thank you for watching oh and one quick thing i wasn't expecting my video on time dilation to blow up like it did so i could really use your help to make this video blow up even more than that one because this is really the craziness the reality of relativity Thank you. Bye.